What does your shirt say? It's it's a Patriot shirt. Don't judge me. Oh wow! Sometimes I forget that side of you exists. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I like don't wear it out in public because I'm like wow Kraft is a piece of shit and Tom Brady's kind of a piece of shit and so I just like don't wear Patriot shirts out in public anymore mm-hmm. but also like they're still my team oh my god okay <laughs> on that note <laughs> I don't know how do people start these things hello my name is Aaron and you're listening to this unnamed thing we forgot to mention right off the bat this is this is Pixel Perfect. We talk about Paige hasn't said her name yet. So no, nope, yeah. that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Paige, you can't think today. <laughs> yeah, so this is Pixel Perfect. It's a podcast where we talk about uh, movies and books and video games and basically whatever the hell we want. Yes, this is our first episode, so bear with us. Mm-hmm. We're figuring it out. We don't know what we're doing yet, but we will maybe, hopefully, eventually. Yep. We didn't. Did we? You know how we wanted to talk about like a news item. Did we did we pick a news item? I figured Elizabeth Banks would be the news that was item, enough. to be honest. Okay. I'm just thinking that because it's it's both relevant and kind of has what's going on. I'm going to start a timer. <laughs> that might be smart. Oh. Okay, yeah. so timer? today we're talking about Charlie's Angels, primarily the 2019 release. Yes. But we're we're touching on the 2000 and 2003 releases as well. Um, yes. So do you, do you want to know, do you want to know what I did? I don't remember if we talked about, you were like, watch the, the two first movies or whatever. And I, instead I watched the pilot episode of the show from oh, the Oh really? 70s. Yeah. I know nothing about the show. Oh my God. Is it awful? It was terrible. I don't like, have you heard the thing that like they coined Jiggle TV because of that show or whatever? I assumed it was Baywatch. Was it, uh, was it, it Charlie's Angels? Basically. Yeah. So I think that from what I saw online, it was basically Charlie's Angels led to the coining of that term. And they're absolutely right. Oh my gosh. It was terrible. Yeah. It was, I don't know how I sat through that whole thing. And then I watched the 2000 movie and the, the train of terrible just continued. Okay. <laughs> so I have to, okay. So here's the thing about the Charlie's Angels 2000 2003 is that i love them oh my God. i love them um i'm aware though so they're like i think that they're a really good example of a semi-feminist idea done in a not feminist way do you know what i mean like i, I feel like the, would, yeah yeah i feel like the concept itself isn't that bad like you know it's about three women working together to right to you know save people and, and do all that i think the concept isn't that bad I think it's just the cinematography yes. and the directing yeah. and the way that they're portrayed that I'm like, eh. Like the whole the whole scene with Cameron Diaz dancing her ass up to the mirror in those yeah. weird whitey tighties is just yeah. a, a painful experience for me. Yeah. It's it's not Also the Soul Train scene. Yeah, that was that's it's a weird scene. Yeah. It's, it's a weird scene. There was there was just like this myriad of like cultural appropriation with like not they were they were well. trying it, but it didn't i don't think it works as well as it as it could have worked no um I, star-studded cast though i mean well literally everyone's in that movie it's, it's a that's one of the kind of one of the things that they were talking about for charlie's Angels 2019 is that it didn't yes. have the star power behind it to yep. you know be successful but there's lots of reasons why it didn't kind of do very well. So you watched Charlie's Angels, the first one, but not the second one, not, right? No, because Charlie's Angels was so painful to me. <laughs> I couldn't bring myself Charlie's to Angels watch Charlie's Angels Full Throttle is the better one, though. Oh, I wish I had known that because I would have watched that one. Yeah. It was just, oh, I just, I had, like, watched the first episode from the 70s and that movie back to back in one sitting, and I was like, I can't. I just yeah. can't keep doing this. Well, Full Throttle, it, it has, it's it's directed by the same person. It's directed by McG. McG, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, who, by the way, is doesn't really have a lot of directing credits. He's mostly a producer. So he produced... Oh, okay. He did uh, Terminator Salvation as a director, and he was mostly a producer for, like, um, The Duff. Do you remember The Duff? I, I didn't watch that. I know what yeah. it was, though. Yeah. And then it was it was The Duff, and it was... Um, uh, I Feel Pretty. I have never heard of that. No. Yeah. Um, so... What was I talking about? <laughs> McGee? Yeah. So I was talking, I was talking about McGee. I was talking about before that. We're killing it. I know. <laughs> I don't know how people do these things in the morning. That's I mean, smart. It's not even that late in the morning, guys, either. It's like 10.37 in the no, morning. No, yeah. I should be awake. Not. Not awake. 
Um, yeah, but Full Throttle has Demi Moore, and it's a... Oh, it's a, really? It's a, it's a woman villain. Oh. So it's, it's a former Charlie's Angels is the villain. Oh, I like that. And it's, it's, re- it's really kind of an interesting film. Gotcha. And there's actually, there's actually a, a good example of, like, foreshadowing. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you're paying attention, you can tell throughout the entire film that it's an angel. Okay. And so you can figure out it's going to be more, but it's still kind of a satisfying thing where, right. like, there's, there's probably people in the world who wouldn't have seen it coming. Yeah. But at the same time, you go back and you rewatch it, and you're just like, oh, wow, this is actually not that bad. Yeah. So Full Throttle is my favorite. <laughs> Um, oh, you know, I, I love I'll give, that, I'll give that one a chance one of these days. I need to. I need but it's, to it suffers from, from the it. same issues of like. Yeah, early 2000s, not. Yeah, not I mean, it's good. it's definitely. it's It's got all the close ups and it's it's got all the. So. Yeah. The humor. I couldn't get behind the humor either. Like, for, it was just mostly bad puns and it just. They weren't landing for me. So I oh. couldn't find myself like laughing or enjoying it. I think, I think I mentioned this to you before, but my favorite moment, and this is from Full Throttle, but mm-hmm. my favorite moment of them, like, trying, where I'm not sure if it was an intentional joke, mm-hmm. but it makes me laugh every time, is um, Drew Barrymore talking about how her and her ex-boyfriend used to drive around listening to metal, and then it's... Yeah, you did tell me about that. Yeah, and then yeah. It's, it's Journey's Living on a Prayer yeah. when they do the flashback, and I'm oh like, do you guys Lord. know what metal is? Are right? you kidding, or are you being serious? But that's kind of, like, the tone of the movies right. in general, is, is, is that... So you're like you're not sure if like they're making a joke or yeah okay so let's start off with <laughs> sorry I just read yeah. one of my notes from the 2000 movie and it just in quotes feel free to stick things in my slot that one really stuck with me <laughs> anyway <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah do you want to put some like numbers on the board here yeah so yeah. Charlie's Angels 2019 um had a budget of 48 million 48 million mm. and it's opening weekend at 8 and made 8.3 million. Yep. <laughs> and then um, domestically so right now it's at it's at uh, 10 million domestically, 22 million international. So it's total for right now is 32 million. Right. That was um, up this morning too, right? I think that's what I saw when I was looking it up. Yeah, I use uh, the numbers.com. The nu- it's they-numbers.com, which is the same website that Charting with Dan currently uses. Oh. And so they have like, they're really great. They update and um, yeah, they have all the actuals Ooh, and everything. Writing it down. <laughs> so it debuted number three um, def- behind Ford and Ferrari and Midway. And... Yeah, so it's not doing too high. No, it's really not. <laughs> and there's, like, multiple reasons that we could a- attribute this to. Um, so, for instance, its marketing budget was originally supposed to be $100 million, and they cut it to $50 million. They cut yeah, it in half. which was a horrible idea. I think the only reason I knew this movie existed was because of Instagram ads, and I saw it literally nowhere else. Really? Yeah, that's the only time I ever saw advertisements for it was on Instagram, which is ironic considering the lead stars, I'm pretty sure, aren't, like, really active on social media, so they didn't really do a lot of promotion on their end. Yeah, one of the articles I read, yeah. like, credited that was basically just, like, the one, the one with the most social media power was Elizabeth Banks. That and, yeah. And Naomi Scott has, like, half the followers that not Christi- right. Emily Banks does, and... I don't think Kristen Stewart's really on social she's media She's not. At all. I think she's yeah. kind of, like, in, living in the dark. And she, like, she, I think she spent the past few years just doing indie films, so. Yeah, she has. Like, I saw a comment yeah. somewhere that people think it would have, the movie would have landed better if they had been coming off, like, the Kristen Stewart high, like, after Twilight and Snow yes. White the Huntsman yes. and stuff like I that. I read the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. And the other thing is that no one's, I've never heard of Ella Belinsky and, and Ellen, Ella Balinska. Which one was she, Jane or? She was Jane. The other one was is the new Jasmine, right? Yes, yes. Naomi Scott, right. and she was in she was in Power Rangers. So she's got a little bit of star power, but right. she's more on the rise and actually being. Yeah, they're really fresh her. on the scene. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think that having an actress that you know a lot of people haven't heard of that's not like a a, a household name mm-hmm. kind of kind of hurt them. Um, yeah, for but sure. we have to talk about the elephant in the room, which is the Elizabeth Banks and the Elizabeth Banks comments. <laughs> <laughs> I just had so many feelings when I, I read I've them. I've been trying to figure out how I feel about these comments. I, for... I feel like it's, it's not like something you said earlier is that I you can kind of like glean what she was trying to get at, but I think she used the wrong words to con- convey how she was feeling because the whole thing about the male genre about the other movies, I was like, no, it's, it's like that's not. Eh. She's a little right though, I think. Yeah. I think she's a little bit right. I'm not saying she's entirely right, but I do think. 
I think two things. I think, first of all, that she's right about the fact that there definitely, definitely were people who went to see those movies just because they were part of cinematic universes. Yeah, absolutely. Like, there's absolutely no way that Endgame didn't impact Captain Marvel. Right. I'm not Endgame, excuse me. Uh, Infinity War impacted Captain Marvel. Right. yeah. Like, there's absolutely no way. So, and I think it's the same thing with Wonder Woman where it was an intro movie for the DC. Yes, and Justice League, Justice League had already come out, so we'd gotten the glimpse of Wonder Woman. No, Justice League hadn't come out. Um, hadn't? I could have sworn it had come out. No, uh, Batman v Superman not, had come out. Not Justin. Yeah. yeah. I was like, Justice, she's in something. <laughs> Justice League came out after. Batman v Superman was her introduction. There we go. So, I and I think that's absolutely right, but I, I, I do feel like people went to go see Wonder Woman, especially because they were like, oh, it's the first female superhero. This right. is awesome. Let's go see it. Um, I feel like I feel like what Elizabeth Banks was trying to get at was that it's not like it's a male genre. It's not a male genre. Like it's only for men, but it, it's been a male tailored genre. Well, and I absolutely. Just she didn't say it like in as eloquent of words. So it's yeah. I mean, when you're frustrated when a movie you just like poured your heart and soul and just kind of bombed at the box office, like how can you not be like, what the fuck, you know? Like I love the Spider Man comment. Like you've had thirty seven Spider Mans and you can't deal with the Charlie. And Angels she was reboot. in the. Sp- Everyone on Twitter's like, but she was in the Spider Man movies. She was in Spider Man one, two, and three. Um, I'm sorry, how do I, have, do I just, like, did I black that out of my memory? I, she, I don't remember her being in those films either, no. but she was in Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3. But the other thing what? I think that she's right about is that these were, like you were saying, they're male, they're, but they're also, they're mostly made by men. Yes. So even if you have, like, um, I believe Captain Marvel was also directed by uh, two people and one of them was a woman. I'm going to double check that right I now. I think so, yeah. Wonder Woman was obviously directed by, by pa- Patty Jenkins. Yep. And... The thing about that is I wrote an entire paper about this and I presented it at a conference. <laughs> but, um, the story was very much orchestrated and controlled by Zack Snyder. Yep. And Zack Snyder, as we know, is a sexist piece of shit. Yep. So... Boo. <laughs> and, of course, you have, like, Kevin Feige as... Um, is that how you pronounce his name? Feige, yeah. I keep saying Phage when I read it. No, it's like, Feige. That doesn't sound right. Yeah, so um, Captain Marvel was directed by <laughs> Anna Bowden and Ryan Flack, so it was okay. it was half, half directed by, by women. And... These are, these stories are very much controlled by men. Yeah. And so you can't, I mean, even though Patty Jenkins was partially a scriptwriter and she was responsible for a lot of it, it's just like, you, it's a fact you can't ignore. Yeah. Like, Zack Snyder was in control of the story. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it is, it has been tailored to men in, like, the comic book audience, which has, and I'm putting air quotes here, has been traditionally men, but mostly because of gatekeeping and no one believes a female and she's like, I like comics and video games. <laughs> And it's, it's, it's more to that, like, if you read, um, oh, I'm trying to remember the actual title, but it's by Glenn, uh, Whedon, and it's about the Batman and Rise of Nerd Culture, that's what it's called. Okay. And it's talking about how basically comic books started to develop more of that, like, a diverse crowd. Yes. And then for some reason, because there was a, like... There was a section of the of the crowd that was the most vocal. Mm-hmm. They still catered directly to that crowd because they were like the loudest. Right. And so there's a lot of that where like, of course, the comic book world is very diverse, and there's a lot of people who enjoy it, but like, there's still people who are like the loudest. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then, but I I do think because she was basically like begging people to go see this movie, like you have to go see this movie, like it has to make money, it has to make money, yeah. it has to make money. And she said, if this movie doesn't make money, it reinforces the stereotype that men don't go, don't go see women do action movies. And I, I think, like you were saying, it's an example of her words being misinterpreted yeah. a little bit. Because I don't think she was saying men don't go see action movies. I think she was saying that if this movie doesn't do well, it's going to reinforce right. yeah, the idea that men yeah, don't go see action movies. Yeah, she said the stereotype. It's like, it is the, a thought that like, oh, men don't want to go see this. Like, but it, it doesn't mean it's true. It's just like, it's a... A perception. It is a perception. Yeah. Like, it absolutely is. I was watching Charting with Dan, um, which is a YouTube... It's from Phantom Entertainment, and it's definitely worth watching if you're interested in the numbers. But he did, like, this chart where he was showing the um, gender breakdown mm-hmm. between women and men um, that went to go see fe- woman-led action movies. Right. And he was... It, they're, the men are actually the majority of the audience on a lot of these movies, like Alita 
And yeah. um, I think a good example is Atomic Blonde. Like I watched Atomic Blonde there in yeah. an interview, and she had like a picture of like all these men and women in like blonde wigs at the theater when it yeah. premiered and stuff. Atomic Blonde was mostly men, but by a very little margin. And mm-hmm. then of course Star Wars was like very much majority men. But like I, I feel like that's not a movie where you can say like, oh yeah, they went to go see a female at action movie. Like they no. went because it was Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like it's it's Star Wars, and it and it, it kind of just became female led as well. Like the right. whole storyline from the first six movies was about like male leads. So. Yeah, so I Sadly. I I don't think like the numbers are there to say like men go see women in action movies, which I think is true. But I yes. I don't think that you can you can say like you're not going to support women action movies, right? Yeah. So I yeah I think that it was just a little. Some words spoken out of desperation. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. it was a little bit of that. And I think that she is, because she went on to say, um, by the way, I'm happy for those characters who have, to have box office success. And then, but we need more women's voices supported with money because that's the power, the power is in the money. Mm-hmm. And again, she's absolutely right. Like, you need to, there's, yeah. like, no matter what you say, there's a, lo- a lot of these movies are still mostly men, like I was saying right. earlier. So it's, You get it's, like 8,000 Jason Statham movies and a million and one James Bonds, and it's just like, it's a never-ending train. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's definitely... It's, yeah. There was a point there, and I lost it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I just gotta say, I'm really annoyed that Elizabeth Banks original comments are hidden behind a paywall because the original interview was done by the Herald Sun. Oh. And I tried to access the original interview. You can't? And I can't access because it's behind a paywall. Oh, that's some BS. And I'm like, okay. So, like, basically, I had to get all of her comments from secondhand yeah. places that were, like, commenting on the comments as it was going. Right, I was like, yeah. I just want to read the interview. Yeah. But, like, it wouldn't, that's it wouldn't let me do that. They don't have, so. like, free articles or anything like that? No. Oh, no. Apparently not. Like, oh, you know, like, bastards. the New York Times and stuff. Yeah, you like, have, five free or whatever. Yeah. 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 So, but they they did not they Goodness. did not do this. That's so frustrating. Um, so you wanted to see the movie? I saw it opening night because I was I like, I'm there opening really night. Saw it last night. Oh really? Yeah, because when we pushed off the recording, I was like, huh, I could wait to go see it. Um, I got because of the reception and like the reviews it was getting, I was pretty apprehensive about it. I gotta be honest. I fucking loved it. I loved it this was movie. A great I love it. Time. I was, it was laughing. So Brendan fun. was laughing his ass off the whole time, and I was. Brendan's like, her what? husband, by the way. Oh yeah, that that some clarification <laughs> there. But like, he was not looking forward to go seeing it either. But he's just like not into those movies anyways, and I obviously didn't enjoy the originals very much either. But like, it was really funny. I thought it was really well done. The storyline was interesting and had yeah. good. Yeah, I mean, people are saying it's generic, and I'm like. Yeah, but, like, most magic movies' movies um, are generic. I was going to say, it's like, I feel like it's pretty on par with every other action movie I've ever seen where they recycled the same storyline. One of the articles I read said part of the reason it flopped is they thought it didn't have as much action as the originals, and I find that ludicrous because I feel like it was nonstop action. Yeah, I mean, I, I... I do think that the original two movies were, like, literally nonstop action. Like, you had some mm-hmm. dancing scenes, but it was, like, you yeah. were constantly, things were blowing up, they were constantly on chases. Like, it was one scene That's after fair. the other. But I don't necessarily think that having, like, there was still tons of action, so I don't necessarily think having oh, yeah, more quiet moments lot. makes it a bad movie. Yeah, it, they made it sound like it was mostly talking and, like, a handful of little action moments, but I, I feel like the, the fight scenes were intense, there was a lot of them, there were some really intense deaths that I was not expecting. I'm like, yeah. this movie was grittier than I expected, but I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the script wasn't as tight as it, it could have been. Mm. There were, like, instances, like, for instance, when, like, <clears throat> uh, Sabina, who was played by Kristen Stewart, and Oh, spoilers, Jane, by the way. If you're yeah. listening to our podcast, spoilers. Yes, we probably should have said that, like, yeah, at the beginning. Spoilers. Spoiler free. <laughs> for, spoilers for this movie. Um, where uh, Sabina and Jane are, like, they become, like, besties, and they're just, yeah. like, and there wasn't really, and they're just, they're, like, oh, yeah, we're great friends now, and there's that line where Jane's, like, since I've seen you, I've made a friend, yeah. and it was a bit, like, I feel like I didn't see the justification for them suddenly I can being agree so buddy-buddy. Buddy. Like, you saw the beginning part where it's, like, okay, this is gonna suck, like, they're in the, the boxing arena, and she's, like, oh, my God, I'm getting partnered up with this fucking asshole, and then she's crying over her being injured and we didn't have any like little moments between the two of them that kind of yeah. developed them slowly building the friendship no i agree i just i think that and i think it's just a few moments like that where the script wasn't as tight as it could have been yeah but i think it overall was a really fun time oh yeah i thought it was great 
I enjoyed it. I think it's super unfortunate. I can't, like, it's got a 4 out of 10 for IMDb and 54% for Rotten Tomatoes, which is less than the Charlie's Angels. 54% for critics, but it's got 79 with audience. Oh, there we go. So it's not doing as bad as with people who go see it. That's fair. Um, which I think was, uh, I was like, I was looking at Twitter on the night that it released, and I was yeah. I was just going through, like, the, t- the tag and the hashtag, and... There were a lot of people that were like, I didn't think I was going to like this movie, but I like this movie. That's exactly there was a lot what of, my thought was. There was a lot of people who were yeah. like that. What I think is funny for the 2000s movie is that it has a 0. 0.5 out of 4 for Roger Ebert, and then the 2019 one has a 3 out of 4, so somebody knows what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but I, okay, so I, like I said, I love the original movies. I, I feel like if I had watched it in the year 2000, I probably would have liked it. <laughs> but yeah. after, like, when you start to, like, learn things and, like, you become more aware of, of stuff and, like, what's, like, not okay. And, or, and when humor ev- evolves over 19 years, it's kind of hard to enjoy something like that. Yeah. I mean, I enjoyed Lucy Liu. She was my favorite part of the movie because Lucy Liu is great. Yeah, no, they're, I mean, they're all, they're all great actresses. And it, it was yeah. a movie, it was an example of a movie that had an extreme amount of star oh power. Oh my god. I, I, one of my notes is literally Joey Tribbiani. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, which fuck? like mattered like back back, back mm, then. Like mm-hmm. now of course he's he's just Joey Tribbiani, yeah. but like it, it definitely mattered no, for sure. back then. Um the Chad was my favorite character. <laughs> the Chad. Also apparently that man was married to Drew Barrymore briefly. Oh, that Like I think they were married in that sort movie. Sort of makes sense. Uh, the Thin yeah. Man is really weird. Ooh, yeah. The Thin Man Kristen is Glover so weird. is just kind of a creepy man. Yeah. Not a fan of him. You know who's creepy? The assassin in, uh, this one, Charlie's Angels 2019. That man creeped me the fuck out. Like, he did his yeah. role well. I did not enjoy him. Yeah. One of the things that I, I heard a lot of critics saying is that it was very characterized in terms of men, the 2019 one. Where in terms mm-hmm. of, like, it, this movie was very, very much supporting a main thesis. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I like, can see and that. And everything was in support of that thesis where it was like, um, it was, <sighs> okay, so here I'm going to get into maybe a little bit of hot water. Okay. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find, I'm going to find a, an audio recording of like steam, <laughs> like, yeah. or, like water boiling. <laughs> yes. So I felt like the, the girl power was a little heavy handed. And I feel like mostly, I, I think I feel like that because the feminism was basic. Like it was it, it was kind of spoon fed to you, like as women watching it, like we know what we go through, like kind of the like when um, Elena's talking to her boss early on and he's like ignoring her in the meeting, or like there's some other comments made later. I'm like, I'm like this is a little bit too obvious, and like we already all know what we're going through in terms yeah. of that. I mean, I there have to be people there who like don't realize it at all, and maybe that That's it would true. be helpful. Um, you cat. Sorry, there's this a cat not, on the table this now. Not your podcast. She just wants to contribute. Just wants to talk about Charlie's Angels. Yeah. Yep. She's like, I'm out. <laughs> Too controversial for me. I can't do it. Um, but like I said, I just feel like the feminism was very like basic and not very nuanced. We're just like it was just like '90s level like girl power. Women can do anything. And yeah. We're just, like like the really weird montage of all the girls at the very beginning yeah. where I was like is this a like a inspirational documentary or is this a film cuz I don't know what I'm watching right now. Yeah, it, that that part was was weird for me and I was like okay, we're so we're, we're doing this. Yeah. Um and I just feel like we've moved beyond that stage. It's yes. kind of like when you watch 90s Buffy and you're like, have you watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer? No. Okay, so it's kind of like when you watch 90s Buffy where you watch and you're kind of like well, for its time, this was really progressive, but, like, also it's racist, and also it's no longer progressive, yeah. and also, like, it's, it feels like a movie that hasn't quite progressed past, like, the girl power stage. Yeah, which I get that. Like, that scene in Endgame when all the women come together, and they're like, oh, she has oh, help. I hate that I, So scene. many people love that scene, and I, I, I don't just, understand it. It feels like I can see those stupid Russo brothers smirking, being like, yeah, we gave the women what they wanted, and it's like, yeah, no, they ah! don't. Yeah. <laughs> It's like they don't understand that like women want care, like especially because that movie that was a movie that basically denied women character development like almost completely. Oh uh, yeah. And same thing with Infinity Literally War. Literally where... recycled the same death scene for two different female characters. Right. Which and I think that they thought they were clever in doing it. We're getting mildly off topic. <laughs> I, know, right? like, yeah. I could. Just I could rage train. <laughs> I could rant about Endgame for Ugh. a while. Um. But yeah, it just it it felt like it hadn't. I was just, I, I left feeling a little bit like, that being said, there is still something progressive about female friendships. 
Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And, um, like, the, the romantic aspects of it were not shoved down our throats. Like, I feel like in the 2000 movie, when there there just seemed to be, like, a lot of romantic subplot that I did not care about at all. And I was like, Luke yeah. Whistle, go away. Like, get out of this movie. Especially I don't care like, about this. Especially I don't care about any of the men. No. It's really interesting that, that 2019 is getting flack for having character men when, like, the men in 2000, 2000, 2000 2003 Charlie's Angels yeah. are so empty. There's nothing to them. They oh, have absolutely. no They have no, like, the personality. Chad talks to him, talks about himself in the third person, and then the villain is just, like, super one-dimensional. Like, yeah. And it's the same thing with, like, Joey Tribbiani's just kind of, like... Yeah. I, I've never liked he Joey literally, Tribbiani's Matt character. Matt LeBlanc was playing the same character in Friends and in that movie at the same time. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's just... And it's so interesting that 2009 is like, well, they're characterizing men. And I'm like, okay, but, like... Can you chill? Sorry, the cat again. <laughs> Um, there's, like, nothing to these men. I feel like at least in the this one, they had a bit more, like, the male villain had a bit more nuance. and Yeah, because I was actually genuinely surprised. I mean, the, the moment he shot Elizabeth Banks in that scene, I was like, nope, okay, you're, I don't trust you anymore. This is not good. But, like, up until that point, like, when they found the tracker in his back, I was totally on board with Elizabeth Banks being the villain. Yeah, I, I kind of, I was a little bit on board with it, but my big thing was... I didn't think Elizabeth Bank was going to have a villain that went against the thesis. Mm -hmm. Like, do you know what that, I mean? Like, no, the main that, like, thesis once of the movie. The, like, the final twist came out, I was like, yeah, that sounds pretty... Like, yeah, like, it, it makes sense going. with the movie. Yeah. So, do you want to transition to the first one now? Like, I, we already kind of talked about it a little bit. Yeah, we're kind of, we're kind of hopping all over the board. We're doing some time traveling. <laughs> my consensus on, on the first one was 1.5 hours of my life, I can't get back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love. I think. I think the biggest difference, honestly, between so, it's interesting because um, Elizabeth Banks mentioned in an LA Times. I think it was the LA Times video um, article. I might be totally wrong though. As I say, looking at it. Are you but, talking about the comment where she said this is a continuation and not a reboot? Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. She talks about it. It's basically part yeah. of the canon, which the movie kind of supports, but it's really. With the bad Photoshop when, at the retirement party. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so one of the things she talked about in that interview was how basically it didn't work for the original three angels to come back, like Drew Barrymore, Lucy Liu, and yeah. Cameron Diaz, where, like, there was, they were trying to work it out where a cameo didn't feel appropriate enough, right. and then there wasn't ways. I could see that. Yeah, but so she considers it She considers it canon. But the thing I find the most interesting in terms of difference is that the original two Charlie's Angels do not take themselves seriously at all. Oh, God, no. Like, they, they're just, like, like, in full throttle, there's this part where they're driving on dirt bikes, and Cameron Diaz's dirt bike blows up, and she literally just flips in the air and sits on Drew Barrymore's bike in a way, like, that completely ignores uh. any sort of laws of physics. And it just, but, like, the movie, it makes sense within the movie, because the movie itself... It's just, it's been that way, like, the whole time. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. It's not taking itself seriously. It's just, you know... Yeah. And it's the same thing in, like, the first one, where Drew Barrymore uh -huh. falls out a window and, and just... The amount of times they fell out of things and then they were like, I have no broken bones. I was like, what is happening It's right the same now? thing with the amount of explosions they survive where you're just like, yes. yeah. And you're like, that's, that's not how this works. Yeah. So, but like, this movie was very much trying, and I think that's kind of actually where it fails a little bit, where it was trying to be very realistic. Yeah. And it wasn't quite realistic enough that you're just like, yes, I'm behind this. Right. I feel like... And I, I saw this in a couple articles, and I was like, yeah, I can really get on board with this idea. I feel like if Elizabeth Banks had actually just taken the stance of being like, I'm going to create an original story with three badass women helming it, like, I think it could have been a good standalone that wasn't part of the Charlie's Angels franchise. Do you think it would have been more successful if it had not been part of the Charlie's Angels uh, franchise? Well, cause, yeah, because I saw, like, a tweet where someone was like, nobody wanted a Charlie's Angels reboot, so, like, why are we doing this? And so I think if it had been, like, an independent story, I think... If it was an independent story with that same amount of marketing, no, it still would have crashed and burned. Yeah. But I think if it had been an independent story that was well marketed, I think more people would have been willing to give it a chance because Charlie's Angels kind of has like that reputation of like yeah. shitty action movie. I th I think that the marketing is definitely the biggest oh, problem. Oh, oh, absolutely. That people heard of it, and I, I also read that. I read a thing that was talking about how. Um, it was a bit like graphic design is my passion. Yes! In terms of, <laughs> in terms of the marketing, that it was just so a little true. bit like the, the marketing images weren't, like the posters and stuff, like, weren't They were not. Great. Yeah. And you would know more about this than I would. Yeah, like, they were like, them. they were very, they were like, oh, that's fine. It was just, it was average. It was not eye-catching. It wasn't like, oh my god, I have to go see what's going on in this movie. Yeah, it just doesn't look interesting. No. Um, but I, I do think that 
the dynamics between the, th- the three women were great. I do think that it was just a fun kind of movie. I love Kristen Stewart. Kristen Stewart was great. There's Holy a lot crap. of people that are saying like that she was straining, that she was miscast, that are it you wasn't kidding? very good. I thought she and was I'm fantastic. Like, I loved her. The whole her. scene of her running down the stairs going, shit, 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 was my favorite. I know. And that was kind of an example where it wasn't quite realistic, but it was funny. Like, yeah. obviously, like, really, she wouldn't pick a place where she couldn't, like, get onto the exactly. street very quickly. yeah. But it was, it, but but it was funny. Like, she's like a lovable dumbass. Like, she's, like, making some of the wrong decisions and then being like, yeah. oops. And like, she's also, like, clearly capable. There are definitely more, a lot yeah. of instances of, of her being capable, but I didn't think she was miscast at all. I liked her no a lot. No way. I thought she pulled that off really well. Yeah, so I don't, I don't quite understand that. Um, to skip around again, we'll get better at this, we promise. We're just, we're kind of riding the swirl down the drain. Yeah. Um, so I kind of want to talk about the numbers for Charlie's Angels and Charlie's Angels 2, Full Throttle. Yeah. So, um, they had much higher budgets. So, Charlie's yeah. Angels was $90 million and Charlie's Angels Full Throttle was $120 million mm-hmm. for budgets. And, um, but, and their opening weekends were actually pretty close. It was $40 million and $37 million, yeah. respectively. And then total, worldwide, they made 259 and 227 which are, like, decent. Like, they made, they made good money. I mean, they made more than they spent, so, like, that's... Yeah. But, like, tra- they didn't yeah. make Charlie's Angels 3 because, obviously, between 1 and 2, the numbers went down and the budget yeah. went up. Yeah. So they didn't end up making Charlie's Angels 3, but it made it made good money. And it's... it's So you're a little bit, like... I'm sure it had a better graphics. I mean, um, mark, gr- better graphics. I'm sure it had better, like, marketing budget. Yeah. Like, obviously, as we said before, like, the star power in this movie is crazy. Like, you, you have Bill Murray in the first one. Right. Like, Did he not come back for Full Throttle? He didn't come back for Full Throttle, no. Oh, they okay. put in, um, oh, I'm trying to remember his name. But they, they came up with a new Bosley. Shia LaBeouf's in Full Throttle, by the way. <laughs> what? Okay, I might have to watch this. Yeah. I might have to just grin and bear it. Gosh. Um, trying to remember his name. Bernie Mac. I don't know how I forgot Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac? Mac. Okay. Bernie Mac is Bosley. Oh, throwback. Interesting. So, okay. yeah, so it's it's obviously, yeah, so I mean, we can just basically, like, speculate about why 2019 didn't do very well, but I think that we would encourage anybody who's listening to oh go Oh my god, see go it. see it. It's yeah, like, and form don't listen opinion. to the internet. It was, at, like, I went in with very low expectations, being like, oh, it's gonna be a shitty plot, but I was very, very pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I it mean, was a good time. it's not, like, the most inventive plot. No. You know what I mean? Like, it's not the most creative plot. Um, no, I wouldn't. But, like, again, like, most action movies... Re- ever, there's, like, eight or nine Fast and the Furious movies, and they keep making that shit, and people watch it. Yeah. Uh, let's let's just put this in perspective. My husband hates everything. Ever. <laughs> and he it's enjoyed true. He's very this grumpy. movie. He's a very grumpy person. And he was like, yeah, I had fun watching that. And I was like, who are you? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my husband liked it, too. Like, Co- Cody enjoyed it as well. And I think it's always... You always come out particularly... Um, Cody and I are both writers, and you're a creative writer, too. Yeah. When you come out, you can't not think about the writing, where you're just like... Yeah. This like, had some moments where it wasn't... Like, I, I felt like I had a rocky start. Like, I really thought... I was like, oh, my opinions are right. This is gonna be shit for, like, the first 15 minutes of the movie, because I really hated that whole opening scene. I don't know why, but I hate it. Are you talking it. about the opening scene where she monologues about women? Yes. And yeah. it's, like, doing weird things with the... I don't know. I just didn't like it. <laughs> and the only part of it I liked it is that, like, where it talks about how it takes um, people, like however many seconds longer to figure out that a woman's a threat yes and i was and yeah. i i thought that was i thought that was that was good because i was like yeah that that tracks that makes sense with my knowledge yeah. of what it is but the rest of it was kind of just like okay it, it just took too long you know i was like yeah, can we, like, can we speed long. this up a little bit like we saw the trailer we know you're gonna choke the guy out <laughs> like just just move along i kind of thought it was funny they like fell in love with her though Oh my god, that was amazing. I I thought it was I love that part. Because, like, traditionally that character would be all like, oh, this bitch, like, I'm going to make sure I end you. But the whole time he's just like, run away with me. What are you you doing later? Can you marry me? (laughs) So that was was fantastic. Okay. Have we hit everything we wanted to talk about? I don't know. I'm I'm trying to look through my through my notes so many ass shots this is about the 2000 movie. Oh, yeah, there's so many ass ass shots it's ridiculous. And there's also, like, the outfits in... Charlie's Angels and Full Throttle Boobs 3. out everywhere. Yeah, and it's a little bit like you had to put them in a situation where they were basically in a strip club. Yeah. Which is which is f- fine. It just feels like like we're not going after strippers here, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, no. But it, it did f- feel a little, like, a, a, every situation they have to be in, they have to be in those outfits. Like, every yes. single one, like, all of them. they're at the racetrack and their freaking thing is unzipped or, like, they, they jumping out of a plane to go to that beachside 
hideaway or whatever, and it's just, like, everything is... And I don't necessarily have a problem with, like, the idea that sexuality distracts men. No. Like, I feel, that's something I feel like the 2019 movie pulled off well, because they're yeah. in a lot of, like, sexy outfits, but, like, you... It doesn't feel... It's not filmed as much for, like, a male gaze, I feel like. Yeah, and I, I think... I absolutely agree. And I think the other thing is that it, it was a bit more realistic in terms of, like, this like this part where they, like, she's wearing heels and they, like, shove sneakers at her. Yeah, Where yeah. it's, like, obviously you're not going to, like, run in heels. And yeah. Whereas, like, Charlie's Angels and Charlie's Angels Full Throttle, they're in heels... Oh, the whole every, time. ...the entire time. The whole time. I was like, what? Your poor ankles. What is happening here? <laughs> and there's this moment... Have you ever watched Nikita? No, I know okay. what it is, but... So you should watch Nikita, first of all. But okay. there's this moment in Nikita where Nikita's in the same thing. She's always in sexy outfits. Mm -hmm. She's always using her sexuality to disarm men. But there's this great moment that I will never forget, and it blew my mind when I first saw it, because this was, you know, a few years ago. And where she's running, she's chasing after a criminal, and she's wearing heels. And she stops to slam her heels against the table and break off the heel, <laughs> and then puts them on and keeps going. And I was like, yep, yes. that's what we need more of. Perfect. Yep, I'm into that. So it's, it's, you watch, it's just definitely Charlie's Angels and Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. We're definitely going for, like, trying to split between, like, the male and female audience where it was, like, mm -hmm. we're going for the girl power, but also, in case you, yeah. you're not interested, we have all of these. It's like they were too afraid to, like, take the risk because they were like, if we make this for women, like, no one's going to come watch it. And they are like, buying into that perception that, like, men aren't which, just going to want to watch is, action movies. Yeah, which is not to say that, of course, the only reason men would ever go see an action movie is because yeah. there's a lot of boobs in it. It's obviously not what we're saying. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I do think, like we were talking about earlier, there definitely is that perception that you have to have that aspect in order to get men to go yeah. see it, which I think is... I feel like men should be more insulted by that than, like, True. anything They probably don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, my gosh. Goodness. The, the original show was very much on par with that. Like, that show was made for the male gaze 100 percent. but again i think it's an instance of like it was made in the 70s what else were you gonna do yeah absolutely i i, I think it's another concept of like a semi semi-feminist to feminist idea yeah made in a non-feminist way right whereas like there is definitely this charlie 2019 was definitely made for it was definitely made for women it was definitely made by women and it it definitely like didn't follow the male gaze, like, you didn't have lingering shots of the ass, you didn't yep. have lingering shots of the boobs, like, they were in, like, they were in, like, sexy outfits, but they weren't sexy to the extreme that, like, mm -hmm. Charlie's Angels and Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Where it's, yeah, it's very clearly sexual and intended to be sexual. Yep. So. Goodness. <sighs> For sure. Oh, I totally fucked up. I remember I, one of the articles I was reading, um, said there was a mid credit scene, and I haven't seen it. Oh, the mid credit scene is amazing. Um, so the, of Charlie, so you walked yeah. out of the theater before it came in. Yeah, and then I was like reading is? stuff, and I was like, "Fuck, I should have stayed." No, yeah. I don't. I yeah. need to watch it. But so I it's forgot. basically um, a training montage for Naomi Scott of to become. Oh, that an was angel. the mid credit scene. Never yeah. mind. I saw that. Okay, yeah, that was the. Unless there was a yeah, that was the mid credit scene. Okay, because it didn't feel like the credits had totally started. Because she yeah yeah they the, did they did like the montage the, and then like they talked to Charlie and it turns out Charlie's a woman or whatever or something yeah. like that yeah which I thought was really interesting yeah I mean that they I went feel like for it that. Makes sense because I don't think Charlie would still be alive. <laughs> so. I don't think I don't think that's what they were implying. I think they were implying that Charlie was always a woman. Oh, re interesting. That's I think that I, I that was how I interpreted it was that Charlie was always a woman. He was using a voice disguiser to be seen as a man. That would be oh, that's fascinating. Um now I need now I need a sequel so I can find this out. <laughs> there's definitely not going to be a sequel. I, like, that's the worst part. Like that frustrates me because I enjoyed not it so much and I was like I could definitely see a continuation of this plot and it's it's just not going to happen. No, there's there's no way. It's even <sighs> Elizabeth Banks has described this movie as a flop. Damn it. Where she talked she put Yeah, she was she, like if you're going to have a flop have your name on it four times yeah. or whatever. <laughs> Cuz she was director, producer, screenwriter and obviously yeah. she Did you she know acted Drew Barrymore in it. was executive producer as well? I did know that. Yeah. yeah. Um which is kind of surprising, but it, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense too because I feel like they had to get permission to, for all that horrible photoshopping and in like pulling in like the other Charlie's Angels movies. Oh, you mean executive producer of this movie? Yeah, of 2019. Yeah. I I did not know that. No, oh, I'm pretty sure I read. Oh God, she no, was I'm definitely producer sure. on on Full Throttle and yeah, because I was it was the article where I was reading about um Elizabeth Banks saying, oh my God, my thoughts all just died. They just jumped off a cliff like lemmings. Um, we're professionals. Oh my god. <laughs> what the hell was I saying? 
Oh, the one where uh, Elizabeth Banks is saying this is a continuation and not a reboot. In the article said <laughs> it was later revealed that Julie Barrymore was also working on this movie. Yeah, I'm looking at IMDb right now and she was indeed an executive Perfect. producer. Perfect. I'm not making up lies. No. <laughs> that comforts me. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's just, it's, it's kind of sad. It is. People, go watch it, please. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, we're so popular, we're going to encourage and yes. make millions for this movie we'll, just by we'll, our we'll opinions. Touch, we'll touch someone's heart, and they'll be like, I'll go see it. Yeah, so uh. maybe we'll make $8 for... Oh, um... Eight, what, one more thing I, I kind of <laughs> wanted to hit on that Charting with Dan was also talking about. I'm going to talk about Charting with Dan a lot because I trust them, and they're great people. So it was talking about how, in terms of screening for critics... Mm -hmm. There was, like, half the screening for critics, and they weren't getting it out soon enough. So, basically, what happened is that all of the reviews mm -hmm. were coming out on opening day or after opening day. So, there wasn't any reviews to tell people to go see the movie oh, on opening day. Wow. That's not smart. <laughs> yeah, and he was talking about how he didn't get a screening either, where, like, so, like, Does nobody... Does he usually? I think he gets screenings to lots of movies. Because okay. I've, I've seen him do, like, you know... Um, Doctor Sleep and mm -hmm. Last Christmas and so he definitely does get screenings to like big movies big right. blockbuster movies um, and basically there was nobody to <laughs> tell people to go see the movie before it, it, it came out which yeah. I think is also just a failure of the marketing that they didn't screen yeah, oh, no, it's movie like big for critics. Marketing no no is just terrible. I just think they did not they did not care about the movie and I think it's 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 more indicative of like. This happens a lot when female movies, like, like mm. Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel obviously had tons and tons and tons of marketing. Yeah, for sure. And I don't think it's unlikely, <laughs> like, a lot of the times when movies like this fail, it is because they didn't invest the money in the marketing yep. and they didn't really invest the money in the movie. Yeah. And I think even if people are like, well, $48 million is a really good budget. And I'm like, okay, but if you look at Charlie's Angels and Charlie's Angels I was gonna say, 2, they had double the budget. Nowadays, or like with the things that you can pull off with like the technology and whatnot, like those things cost money. So Yeah, it's actually not, I mean, it's obviously, it's $50 million, so it's, it's really high. Yeah, yeah. But it's, in terms of movies, in terms of like a blockbuster movie, it's not that high. No. So, I just feel like they didn't, they didn't put enough into this movie. And I no, also they think. they kind of set it up for failure. I, I think yeah. a little bit they did. And I think also, I think the fear is that movie produ like studios are not going to look at all the details, right? They're not going to say, mm -hmm. like, oh, we didn't put enough money into marketing, and that's the problem. They're not going to say, like, oh, we, yeah, we didn't absolutely. have enough star power with this movie. They're just going to say, like, oh, well, women movies don't do well. And I think that's the fear. I think that's where Elizabeth yeah. Banks is coming from, is this fear of, like... Absolutely. And that's understandable. And it has it has happened. There's a reason absolutely. why we don't have a lot of female led yeah. action movies. There's a reason for it. It goes wrong, and they're like, eh, screw this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just it, if Wonder Woman was basically the first, unless you count like Catwoman and stuff, which of course no nah. one does. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Wonder Woman was the first um, woman action movie, and I mean, first and first woman superhero movie. And so that's that's really really late. And yeah. A lot of or that at least in terms because... of like a major blockbuster. Yeah. I think we've had other little things here and there. Like I don't I don't know the timing of like Atomic Blonde or some of those other ones. Atomic Blonde, I believe, was post Wonder Woman. Was it post Wonder Woman? Yeah, I believe so. Time has been blurring together ever since like 2016 passed. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's crazy. It is crazy. So. Are we all done? Are we set? I don't know. I guess that kind of exhausts my thoughts. I mean. Paige is going to go watch Full Throttle now. I, unfortunately, <laughs> yes, I am going to go watch Full Throttle. Not today, but maybe maybe in the near future. Um, I don't know, I guess. Would you say the 2001 is still your favorite? Oh, God. I mean, the you mean Full Throttle, the 2003 one? Oh, yes, yes. Um, I think that the movies themselves, despite having the same, being the same IP, are so very different that I think that I can say, like, they're both, like, the 2019 and the 2003 are my favorites. Yep. Because they're just so different so that different. you can separate them, basically. That makes sense. I get that. I mean, I definitely, 2019 would be my favorite, for sure. <laughs> which which makes sense. But yeah. I, I definitely would give Full Throttle a chance. Yeah. They're both on Netflix, by the way. So if you have Netflix, both Charlie's Angels, the original, and Full Throttle are on Netflix. And if you want to waste $4 and rent an episode of the original season to see where it all started, you can go on Amazon. <laughs> I don't recommend it. <laughs> 
I think there's a lot of people who found the original Charlie's Angels, like, in, empowering, and... I'm sure, I mean, being, if I was a like, woman in the 70s and I was watching that, I'd probably feel like a badass. Yeah. Because, yeah. comparatively, like, what else have you got? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I definitely, I definitely get it. For sure. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So... That was great. <laughs> Next episode, we're doing... We're talking about Pokemon, right? Yeah, we're doing Pokemon Sword and Shield. It should be a rocking good time. So I'm not 80. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us on this, you know, first shit show. I'm sure we'll get it together. Yeah, I mean, probably not. Probably not. We're gonna hope. We're gonna Set hope. Set your expectations low, just like you did for the movie, and you'll be pleasantly surprised. <laughs> <laughs> of course, oh now God. that we've built out the movie, if you guys see it now, it's gonna be a... But, like, we're hoping it still hits expectations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Middle ground. You have middle yeah. ground expectations. So join us next time. Um, reach out to us. If you're finding us on the website, our Twitters are both there. Yeah. Oh, we have pixelperfectpodcast.com is our website. We're working on getting the social media. Actually, by the time this comes out, our social media will be up. Just kidding. But yeah, go check out the website. Subscribe. We'll be on SoundCloud and Spotify. Probably not iTunes because it was pissing me off and they're changing their platform. So screw Apple. <laughs> All right. And then... Um, <laughs> Hopefully, YouTube eventually we're gonna, we're gonna, we'll get on YouTube. Yes. That, sh- that should happen. But thanks for joining us, y'all. She's from New England, by the way. <laughs> <about y'all. laughs> we're in New Hampshire, and she's just like, y'all. All right. Bye. Bye.